The Tertiary Education Trust Fund is an interventionist agency of the federal government of Nigeria, which is consolidating as a model intervention agency for Nigeria's knowledge economy. TED Fund is charged with the responsibility of resuscitating, restoring, and consolidating education in Nigeria. TED Fund has evolved over the years in name, mandate, and focus, but its core mandate is to use 2% of education tax charged on accessible profit of all registered companies in Nigeria to halt the rot in Nigeria's tertiary education sector and help turn around universities, polytechnics, and colleges of education. Since the beginning of his tenure, the Executive Secretary of TED Fund, Professor Suleiman Elias Bogoro, in line with the paradigm shift of the fund's intervention, is striving to refocus TED Fund interventions towards content, particularly as it affects research and development, ICT, library, academic, manuscript development, in addition to physical infrastructure. The TED Fund boss speaks candidly on TED Fund, the paradigm shift, sharing his vision of a new era where institution plays a key role in transforming Nigeria's knowledge economy using the triple helix method, where private industries, government, and the academia work together to design and produce quality graduates and undertake purposeful research that will form the hub of intellectual and technological success. Professor Bogoro expatiates on precisely what he means by research and development. Research and development, uh, sometimes also more recently referred to as research for development. Both make sense. It's an acronym, R&D, as it's called. Uh, the R&D acronym is very familiar to all of us. But sometimes people we have to deconstruct the real essence and the purpose for R&D as a reference in the context of um, making research count for development. That is what R&D is all about. That for too long, uh, besides the fact that you say it, in a Nigerian tertiary institution, particularly a university, for most of the time overemphasized teaching at the expense of research. And that um, it was going the wrong way. Yes, they are complementary. If you do research, you must communicate by way of imparting that knowledge. And that's what teaching does. But that uh, teaching does not perfect research. It's research that improves teaching. And uh, more importantly, that the outcome of research must be used to make a difference. And that is why the development component of going forward in research becomes important. Uh, so R&D, research and development, we know it globally. It's been so institutionalized that the most competitive nations, it is like the driving force for achieving results and making a difference. Um, it is a central aspect that is um, defined by the innovative requirements of research in order to solve problems of technology, of economy, and of nation. And so you will find out in many countries, talking about investment on R&D, is to talk about knowledge investment. The economy of the 21st century is knowledge economy. And believe me, it's all around R&D or R4D. TED Fund annually disburses funds to 213 tertiary institutions in the country with the aim of creating a conducive environment for teaching and learning. For many years, much of the intervention funds were spent addressing infrastructure deficits. The new vision of TED Fund under its present leadership is to expand intervention to cover more of content if our tertiary institutions are to be globally competitive. The emphasis we're making shifting grounds more recently uh, from only fiscal infrastructure or mainly fiscal infrastructure to significant investment on what we call the content. 
non-fiscal interventions in our public tertiary institutions was to move the right direction. Um, the original idea that informed the establishment of the education tax init initially and later trust fund, ETF, that is today TED fund, was because of the deficit of even the basic things that define a public or even private tertiary institution. If we have the physical laboratory, or the buildings called laboratories. You have the libraries, the buildings. You have the lecture halls. But these days, those things are incomplete without the content equipment. Um, if it's a laboratory, if you don't have the equipment and the reagents, for instance, for chemistry, then you now know that you have an incomplete laboratory. You may label it laboratory, but if the basic hardwares are not there, the basic mechanical and digital software touch equipment are not there, it is truly not a full laboratory. But most importantly, the key first reference in content component, besides, of course, research, which requires the equipment and the facilities, is the faculty it was realized that we could not continue to provide that yes, at about 25, 30 years, in short, at the inception of the implementation of ETF, there were virtually no uh, physical infrastructure. Um, that it was, it was painful. That what you knew as glo glorious and glorified universities of the early, mid 60s, 70s, late 70s, early 80s, and all that started disappearing. Talking about faculty, faculty is about the personnel. Just be specific. I mean, um, the caliber of professors and researchers make a difference, or chief lecturers in the Polytechnics and College of Education. Um, there are times when students, undergraduate students, they want to go for a lecture when they know that it is a respected top class professor or lecturer, they want to say this one is top class, first class, I mean, highly rated. If he goes into a class, um, you find out that from the beginning to the end, they, they are attentive because that person is of quality. And more so, especially when we are talking about quality of faculty, one of the requirements or indices of judging the quality of faculty is to determine how many research grants that faculty member, that professor, that researcher is attracted, both local and international research grants. Those are some of the parameters that are used to determine the content quality. If you take a look at the ranking of research grants, you find the Ivy Leagues are top there. They have the highest research grant. Research grant, for instance, in uh, California University, Harvard, um, it's, it's, it's as good as the, the entire budget of uh, more than half of Nigerian states put together. Then, but that is a single university. That speaks about what is required, the funding requirement. But investment has been delivered to invest in the right areas. But then, the, coming back to the R&D thing, if you are not undertaking research to improve the value of either the cement that the Dangotes are investing on, or expanding the value chain in the oil industry, through research, uh, innovative research, then you know that we are not advancing. If it is agriculture, if they are not, if there is no value addition for agri produce, if it is, uh, you just say, well, we have red Sokoto, and so what? What are you getting out of it? Is it just the meat or is the milk or some gold? Because some of us animal scientists, we know that goat meat is one of the very best. If you are not getting value addition from the production or injecting aspect of science into it, then you are not, we're not advancing. These are some of the areas that should occupy the researchers and faculty members in a university. The professor makes a clear distinction between basic research commonly practiced in Nigeria's tertiary institutions and applied research. But what exactly is applied research and why is it so important? 
for too long we have dwelled more on basic research. And Ted Fund, we recognize that, yes, you need basic research to understand and reconstruct, if I may put it that way, some concepts, theories of in various disciplines. So to, to understand the basics and proceed to attempt to go to level one, if we have three, four, five levels, moving from the basic to the applied, to, to attempt moving from level one to level two, that happens at bachelor's degree level and uh, to some extent at master's. For the PhD, most of the time, if you are graduating PhD, um, one of the questions that external examiner puts to you is, if you are in the sciences, what can you say has your research for the doctoral degree contributed as to original, made original contribution to knowledge and science? That would always be a question put across to you original contribution to knowledge and if and the science is to science in which whatever discipline it may be the idea is that what is it different you've done at bachelor's and master's degree we can say well you are trying to understand the basic that is basic research but they are the applied research how are you solving particular problem that nobody thought about from your research are you likely to proceed beyond that to get products those products whether they are they are material or immaterial products from that original research is the difference that is what is the applied research late in 2019 a novel coronavirus now named covid 19 broke out in china and has since spread across the world as an unprecedented pandemic which has devastated both human health and the global economy nigeria has fought the war against this deadly virus within its borders with tet fund as one of its soldiers. We take a look at how TED Fund is funding research, not just into the advancement of COVID-19 protective gear, ventilators, and hand sanitizers, but also for a vaccine that would deal a lethal blow to the pandemic. We're very conscious that people will turn to us to hear what we are doing, that we are supporting the tertiary institutions the public tertiary institutions, universities, polytechnics, and college of education. What we are doing to address this pandemic of COVID-19. Uh, we are very conscious, even before Nigerians asked us, we knew what was our responsibility anyway, before even COVID came. And that is why, for instance, we have two categories of research grants. We have the basic, the one for basic research mainly, the institution-based research, IBR as we call it. That is managed with a ceiling of just 2 million naira at the institutional level. Then the larger one that is managed by TED Fund uh, through, uh, as it were, by the National Research Fund Committee, it has a ceiling of up to 50 million. That is the one that calls to uh, deeper thinking, deeper injection of knowledge to understand uh, and put up research outcomes that solve problem of I said technology, economy, or society overall. And um, yes, we, the National Research Fund, let me say that even the research grant that we approved, uh, 128 of them in January for 2019, there were one or two of those uh, research grants that uh, were addressing uh, aspects to do with um, COVID research by um, pharmaceutical scientists and uh, medical scientists or a combination of both uh, as it were uh, biochemistry uh, the professors in in the other uh, areas of science as it were uh, we did not know that we will come into 2020 with the big big challenge of covid i can tell you that from the national research fund uh, a significant percentage of the research grants in fact uh, more than one quarter, nearly 30%, uh, were in the medical and related medical uh, disciplines. And so it was as if we saw it coming. So it wasn't difficult for us to look back to our constituency and challenge the researchers there. Well, because that firm, we are limited 
in sponsoring only research from public tertiary institutions. But because it was COVID, and we wanted to get give opportunity to private institutions, the industry, uh, non-state actors, uh, the board of trustees, and because the federal government said, well, this is pandemic. Uh, this is, we have a new normal. In responding to the new normal, we now had to open the space and say, well, this time around, not just as partners, we could support direct research from any of the non-state entities. And that is why at the end of the day, for instance, out of the six research grants that we're supporting, one of them is from NAFDA. But of course, we have, uh, the majority are from universities. And uh, we are aware that a polytechnic is about putting up one, and uh, we hope we're able to support it because uh, it is a very important research in respect of uh, providing uh, oxygen and tubing it for the purpose of uh, patients. And you know that that would be particularly helpful uh, in respect of ventilators. University of Ibadan, uh, Usman Danfordio University of Sokoto, University of Jos, Unizik uh, Oka, uh, Unilag, and, and then in many other cases, there is partnership between them with other universities, which I can't name all of them now. Um, they got our grants. So we have uh, identified and uh, certified six research grants in respect of COVID. The COVID-19 crisis has resulted in the closure of learning centers across the world. As a result, education has changed dramatically with the distinctive rise of e-learning, whereby teaching is undertaken remotely on digital platforms. It would be no surprise that in order to adapt to this radical shift, tertiary institutions would be knocking on TED Fund's door for support. Um, globally, we, there is, we have no excuse whatsoever but to strengthen our intervention and funding of uh, ICT facilities uh, for us to uh, migrate, uh, yes, migrate to digital learning, uh, and which the uh, Minister of Education, Malan Ademu Ademu, has, has made it clear that he expects from the month of March when we are about going for the lockdown, when Nigeria went in lockdown for COVID, um, that within nine months, uh, institutions, majority institutions should move and migrate to e-learning. That is, we have, no, we have no option. And we are responding this way, that a number of available funding uh, for our beneficiary institutions, we are advising them to commit significant amount for ICT facilities and broadband in particular is definitely one of them. Uh, we've tried the issue of centralized broadband. That has, has failed significantly. Uh, we hope that could be reconsidered, but for now, most of the institutions have decided to go solo. So they try to, uh, they have, many of them have acquired broadband that has, is presently servicing to a significant satisfactory level their, their requirements for ICT uh, provision to support e-learning. It is one thing to introduce innovative concepts and ideas that can have positive impact on higher learning, and quite another to ensure that the progress made is sustained. For policies to have a lasting effect, they must be institutionalized. Two critical ways that TED Fund is securing its reforms are through the research and development Foundation, and the TED Fund Centers of Excellence. Professor Bogoro tells us more. Let me start with the National R&D Foundation that is my vision and dream. Uh, that the issue of institutionalization of R&D, for me, the best way to get it done is for Nigeria to establish a National R&D Foundation. And if we do, the idea is that, that we now have had created an institution and, and, and uh, a platform that draws funds and is used to support research as never before. That we look forward to a national R&D foundation that will have uh, in hundreds of billions of Naira 
as annual collection uh, that will address R&D from even basic research, but most of it, in my opinion, should go more for the applied research. So if there is basic, that means it can support uh, even some undergraduate and master's degree as scholars. But for the applied research, um, you will then be sponsoring PhDs, postdoc, and bench work, both local and overseas. If that happens, uh, that it will be just one aspect. Then, of course, the National R&D Foundation would also have a window to encourage deliberate partnership between the educational institutions and industry. If today we want to improve on the quality of a particular drink or any snack in Nigeria, uh, it can be pomok, it can be uh, masa, it can be nakia. And uh, you want to improve on it, especially in respect of uh, lifespan, storage, or organolectic qualities of those products. Um, you have to inject research. If you bring the, 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 the industry and the researchers that have the expertise to make a difference and add value through the outcome of your research together, and you grant them the funding and they work together, that is the essence of the National R&D Foundation, so that there will be available research grant, which is generated from compulsory, supported by law, uh, availability of funds for it. But then the same industry that makes it available will benefit. This, as well as the academic uh, institutions, research institutions, public and private, uh, centers of excellence, and so on and so forth, as well as non-governmental organizations that are able to justify the essence of putting up a proposal, a quality proposal that uh, looks and uh, is indeed fundable. So that is the aspect of uh, R&D. Then for uh, centers of excellence, yes, remember that TEDFAN in the year 2020, for the first time we have inaugurated uh, TEDFAN centers of excellence. With majority of the centers of excellence around the disciplines uh, of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, as it were. And uh, we are also conscious that uh, we deliberately emphasize some of the centers of excellence in agro-based areas. Uh, whether it is uh, uh, species conservation, uh, marine research, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, kidney transplant, you can go on and on. Of course, infectious diseases, we have COVID, we've had, we have Lhasa, we have had Ebola, uh, you don't know what comes next. So those things uh, challenge us. And so the centers of excellence um, that we have created, we are trying to do what the African Centers of Excellence through funding of World Bank, managed by National Universities Commission, has been doing for all these years. They have research grant of uh, the Centers of Excellence funding of between three to five million US dollars. The Third Fund Centers of Excellence is just a little above two million dollars at the current exchange rate. So we can say two to three million or two to two and a half million US dollars uh, for that. So we are barely just about half of what the World Bank provides. But we said, why not? Let us have Ted Fund Centers of Excellence. Uh, in other words, Centers of Excellence funded within the country, within resources in this country. And the idea is, let us have those Centers of Excellence that they will become references of excellence. That's what a Center of Excellence, in terms of uh, faculty quality, in terms of research infrastructure, an outcome of research, that they have outcome of research that they can publish in the best of journals across the world. They have outcome of research that the industry takes up, uptake of research for commercialization. That is the essence of the R&D anyway, uh, which I, I, I didn't find time to explain that bit. That the commercialization of research output, the success rate of commercialization of research output is a major index of the depth of research. That is the real R&D. And so that is what the centers of excellence should be able to do. You go to a university, they say, hey, we have three, four centers of excellence. If you go there, you meet top quality uh, faculty, best set of professors, very brilliant PhD, young PhD holders. Some of them that will go for uh, postdoc, 
and they return, they have gone to some of the best centers of excellence, they come with their brilliant ideas, very hot, and they are ready to bring up others, train others uh, as undergraduate, master level, and PhD. That is the essence of centers of excellence that you can compare with the best anywhere in the world. The future certainly looks bright for the federal universities, polytechnics, and colleges of education in Nigeria. As the nation seeks to grow from a developing economy to an economic powerhouse, Nigeria may look towards these institutions to provide the next generation of thinkers that would unleash its creative energies and unlock the doors to the first world. These institutions would in turn look to TED Fund to help make this aspiration a reality.